Welcome to the first episode of our Sleepaway series, everyone. We have a phenomenal series in store for you this month, and we are so excited to present it for you. Jay Dragon did a phenomenal job with this game, and our guest this series, Nicole Trainer, really helped the game shine, and I love what we came up with together. But before we get to all of that, here's what to expect in our call to action. After the show, you can join us to hear more about the new campaign that Ryan is editing for the OneShot Network Patreon feed. Um, you can hear about a new episode on a different podcast that I guessed it on a while ago uh, and just released recently. Uh, a brief reminder to those in the U.S. to go out and vote, please, on November 8th, um, as well as the normal podcast sign-off junk that we do. Ryan wrote goodies, <laughs> but I'll say junk. It's fine. Um, but it includes, most importantly, a very new and exciting review. Uh-huh. Uh, but that is it for now thank you so much for joining us for this series everybody enjoy the show Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I am one of your hosts, Ryan, and this episode, my co-host Amelia and I are thrilled to welcome Nicole Trainer, aka Faye, she uses she, her pronouns, from the Misfits of Space podcast to cover the game Sleep Away, a belonging outside belonging game about summer camp and Existential Horrors by Jay Dragon. Welcome to Character Creation Castle. I'm really excited that we're going to do this. I'm so excited too. I've been waiting like all week. (laughs) 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 I'm wiggling. I'm sure you can hear the wiggle too. (laughs) Um, Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, um, where people can find you, what kind of projects you're working on? Sure. Um, Pretty much my only project is the Misfits of Space podcast, which Ryan already mentioned. We're in our second series for that. Our first um, one was a Star Wars game. We finished up that campaign. Now we're doing a Scum and Villainy campaign um, where we drive our GM a little wild because so far I have yet to find an issue that I can't kiss and or flirt my way out of. So (laughs) that sounds correct. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Is your GM expecting something else? Uh No. And, you know, like some of our previous shenanigans were like, let's go undercover as a bachelorette party to this mining planet. Like, Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. It's, it sounds like you're playing the game correctly. Right? Uh-huh. Right? Exactly. Oh, it's just he keeps, he keeps thinking he knows what to expect from us. And then he's like, no, no, I don't. So it's great. But yeah, I'm Lita Echo Tan on that this season. And I'm the scoundrel. And I'm very much living up to that. Amazing. Um, I'm also sometimes you can hear me on the Redacted Files podcast on a couple of things, um, specifically the Thirsty Sword Lesbians, which was one of my favorite games ever. Mm. And then I also do a incredibly sporadically released podcast with my two kids called Jack, Sam and Mama. Um, but yeah, and then mostly I'm on Twitter for now, for the time being. I'm mm-hmm. uh, Phaedra220 on that. And um, also on Tumblr. I don't know if anybody does Tumblr, but Tumblr's a good place to be. Um, as Phaedra two two zero as well. I for, I forget that Tumblr exists like ninety nine percent of the time. Mm, it's wonderful. It's <laughs> it, all your trash dreams exist here. It's great. It's a oh, happy place for me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, let's go ahead and get into this, and we're going to start by discussing what this game is all about. What's in a game? So, what is the core concept of Sleep Away? So to me, the core concept is that you're a camp counselor at this summer, like this beloved summer camp that's like a part of you, um, where you're fighting the Linworm. It's a game of queer belonging, found uh, found family. Uh, You're fighting to end generational traumas. And also it's a horror game, which is (laughs) the aspect I forget the most. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, I always thought, oh, Sleepaway, it's a, it's a nice, uh, cozy game with like uh, some cool summer camp mechanics. Um, but there's that existential horror that's there too. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's like, wow, look at all these great, intense, emotional, vulnerable moments. And all right, this horrible, horrible, like, thing hanging over all of it Uh uh-huh yeah i always forget about that part of it too even though i have like a a supplement that is specifically like more of the horror stuff (laughs) Mm -hmm. i don't forget what it's called but um yeah i i always forget that there's like that it's not just like happy campfire feels right (laughs) right like all that intense emotional drama between the like the counselors and everything like oh yeah there's something else too Mm -hmm. but Can you tell us a little bit more about the setting for this game? Obviously, you're playing at a summer camp, and obviously there's a lindworm. Yeah. But um, what else is going on here? So, well, I think that's one of the cool things is because as part of character creation, you also set up the summer camp. Um, So, yeah, like there's all sorts of good stuff, like Secret Kissing Grove has to be decided. Um, You know, what happened last year, like all those aspects. So you build the summer camp because it's not just... The, the cool thing about this system, which is belonging outside belonging, is you don't just play the PCs um, because there's no GM. People will pick up NPCs or campers or even settings elements to play. So those all need to be filled in and filled out. And that's more character creation stuff we have to do. Um, we love good so yeah. world building. We oh, do. It, it's, so, it's true. It's so good. It is, it is one of my favorite world building settings. Like just everything that you can pick from is just so evocative. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like you you build this camp. and i don't know to me i grew up in northeast like in the northeast and so like all my summer camps are like based in like the woods of pennsylvania Mm. um in my head so they're always woody there's always a lake um and then there's always that intense feeling of summer camp to it i only know summer camp from the fight of the 13th movies so (gasps) i also get the woods (laughs) in the lake (laughs) yeah yeah but i think that that's really like what summer camps are here too though because we you know we're in the midwest yeah so but wisconsin's a pretty like foresty yeah Mm -hmm. area too so like when i went to like girl scout camp and stuff that was always in the woods and everything too yeah i guess i guess if you're in like florida or in the keys or something you could have like a beachy summer camp but oh that's weird that doesn't feel right no Uh. i can can kind of see that but like yeah at, like where do you do like campfire and like hatchet throwing? On the beach is a thing that my daughter did at summer camp <laughs> right? this year. You, you just throw hatchets at the the sand dune castle <laughs> things that you make. That's oh, okay. that's fair, but, uh-huh. they can't, but then there's <laughs> no woods for kissing him. Yeah, well, I mean, there's probably other places. That's fair, but yeah, but yeah, <laughs> I feel I feel that the sleepaway summer camp is specifically a wooded, lakey summer camp. That I think yeah. is like the only constant. Everything else, like I went to summer camp and like it feels the intensity of summer camp to it. Cool. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So what sort of tools then do we need to play this game? So there, I, I want to clarify there could be two sets of tools because I've played this game online where you need like a discord and mm-hmm. like a discord bot to deal cards. Oh, cool. Um, and then something like, um, like Miro or Google Sheets to draw your map on. Okay. So online, it's a little bit easier, but in person, you will need, um, you'll need a deck of cards, which actually you can't see because my video is off, but I did get us a, a nice set deck of cards. Um, you want note cards. Um, you want a piece of paper to draw a map on. And then it's also recommended to have like a bulletin board because you kind of, when you play in real life, you kind of start to put together like a conspiracy board where you pin everything to the board and you tie everything together with string. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, and that, yes. That yes. gets much cooler as the game goes on because then oh, you amazing. do stuff like tear the card with your teeth, light this on fire, cut these strings. Like it gets very, very visceral. Ooh. Yeah. So, that sounds amazing. But yeah, the, yeah, and you need, um, and the important thing is you need something to serve as tokens because tokens is the how all moves are decided in this game. Oh, yeah. Uh, Because of the belonging outside belonging. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, What kind of stories and themes are we exploring in this game? I know we talked a little bit about the horror, a little bit about the relationships. Can you expand on some of that? Yeah. So I I always look at the... Like there's a lot of self-discovery, like there's like with each of the characters, like play to discover this about yourself and each of the um, core characters you can pick from have a very distinct feel to them. 
Um, so you're going to figure out something about your character. Um, you're going to figure out something about, because, and even the questions you ask other players, like explore those relations. Why did you stop loving me? How did I save you? Um, figure out what those mean, what you mean to each other. Um, you're, it's a, there's a lot of self-discovery, exploration, understanding why, what the camp means to you, why it means what it means to you. Um, what, why the camp is like it is. Um, and then not only that with, between the counselors, between the campers, like the relationships between the counselors and the campers. Um, and there's a lot of, I like going for it for like really just leaning into all the angst and emotion you get from playing a young adult in this really intense setting that is always camp. Um, Mm -hmm. but I know other people play it with like real heavy on the horror aspects. So you can, I find that you can go either way with this. Like I've always played, um, not to make it less of a game, but I always tone down the horror aspects, at least the the visceral gory ones, mm-hmm. um, and still leave those emotional dreads just because I'm someone I can't, I can't be around kid harm. Um, so mm-hmm. immediately that's like off the books for me. Um, yeah. but you can still make this game, uh, you can still make the Linworm terrifying without that. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, but yeah, I find like a lot of games too, um, that have an or uh, like a horror aspect that I do better when it's like sort of this like creeping dread kind of a thing, yeah. more than like a visceral kind of like gross gore, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, a, a this- psychological thriller versus a slasher. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. More, more of the orphan or mama than like Friday the Thirteenth. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I'm also yes. a big yeah, yes. So like yeah, where it's and it's good because there's a lot of that stuff to explore. But I mean, it, there's also allowances if you really want to go hardcore slasher movie on that, go for it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So then, uh, then what do characters that you play do in this game? So I I took notes on this because it's like yeah, you, well you protect the campers, you fight the linworm, you explore the relationships to each other, you figure stuff out, you fight with each other, like mm-hmm. everything young adults do at summer camp. So it's like okay, I got to leave the arts and crafts session today, and this camper's being a pain in the butt. So you deal with that, and then you go to lunch and you have a fight with a counselor. Maybe there's a counselor you want to kiss, and you go through that, and you know, and in the background, like everything in the setting is still going on. Like the linworm is still there, creeping around, like messing mm. things up so it's you're oh. you're trying to survive summer camp you're trying to make sure that the kids survive summer camp and not just like because of the limeworm but just because it's also summer camp yeah <laughs> and they let them throw hatchets yeah they could that could 100 be a thing our summer camp does uh-huh. <laughs> what do you feel makes this game particularly unique for you i i it feels like camp. When I play Sleep Away, I go back 25 years to when I was at camp, when I was a camp counselor. And it it feels like camp. Like it's so, I know I keep saying visceral and evocative, but it really is. Like it, the, the phrases Jay used for like making selections from the camp, for the campers, for the counselors, all of that, like they have a distinct feel to them. And you immediately get that sense of this is camp. This is being a queer young adult trying to figure yourself out. And it's so it's so steeped in that. Um, and it's just how everything links together, like the questions between the camp, like all the the PCs, the questions you have towards the campers, mm-hmm. how every like how all the settings elements t- like tie together. Like it's a very, a very set and very compact and very neatly organized game. Like where it just, yeah, this everything makes sense together. Oh, very cool. Love that. Yeah. yeah. Love, like, when games just, like, you know, again, again, this is, like, my hill to die on, is that you can't run everything in D&D. Right. Um, because there are, like, mechanics and terms and, like, all that kind of stuff that really make games feel like something else. Like, the mechanics matter. They, you know, affect yeah. how you feel while you're playing the game. And I love when games manage to get that, like, just right and hit yeah. that sweet spot. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, like the moves, some of the moves you do in here are just, they're so good. Mm-hmm. Like, they're so good. And like, they wouldn't work in anything else but something like this. Yeah, because a lot of the move it looks like um, you you actually have rituals that yes. you do as a player. Right? Yes, right. That is also unique to this because there's not just the gameplay. Like, there's not just the like the aspects of belonging outside belonging where you're going to play as a different setting. There's also things where it's like, oh, man, okay, this play is really intense right now. I need a break. Hey, let's all 
let's go out and look at fireflies. That's a that's a ritual in the game we can do in character, mm-hmm. out of character, and just just make you know ground ourselves or you know step away from the horror or other rituals that you lean into that more. Mm-hmm. And that's that's so interesting. I've never played a game before that has like the rituals as part of gameplay and in the way that they're done, where it's like okay, right. Firefly night, everybody goes outside. And, like actually goes outside and looks at fireflies oh yeah like that's so good it's that's <laughs> amazing uh like i know there are some other games that i've seen that do have that sort of ritual aspect to it um like reflections i think comes to mind okay but, but that's mostly like a um the the ritual is you start the game with this phrase you do this thing and you insert this memory and you say it all in a very specific way every single time you play yeah and and that's the ritual of this that game but then like this just takes it next level it seems yeah like yeah and the way that they're handled it's like this is so this is so good like there's so much there's so much care in this game like it's not just like like i don't i don't think of myself as a person who likes horror but like the the like all the safety tools how everything ties together and like the way it's all written with like hey we understand this could be much here's a ritual to break it up or here's, you know, oh, you know, maybe the field element comes into play. Now we have a moment of play and everything is good and sunny. Like mm-hmm. the, all, I feel very protected, which makes me inclined to push myself to a limit because I know that it's safe and I won't be hurt. And I can, yeah. if I want to be hurt, it's my choice. And I'm choosing that because sometimes mm-hmm. I do. Sometimes yeah. I want my heart crushed a lot of yes. times. Mm-hmm. And this is, Agreed. A, this is a very <laughs> good game. This is a very good game for crushing your heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that, here for it. And, and for those that know you, that's extraordinarily on brand. Yeah. <laughs> Crush my heart with velvet gloves should be a saying. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, well, before we actually dive into uh camp creation and character creation, um, we do like to go over the history of the game and then on uh, terms of concepts. But for the for the history, uh this game, as we said, was created by Jay Dragon. Um, utilizing the belonging outside belonging system, which originated by the the uh, the Dream Apart and Dream Askew uh, games by Avery Adler, um, and and those were inspired as well by the Powered by the Apocalypse system. So there's a lot of uh, the moves and playbooks and that sort of uh, similar terminology utilized uh, in the Bob system. Um, games within games. Yes. I know. <laughs> Um, and and this one was actually kickstarted in the before times in July of 2019, um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, pretty pretty fantastic. Uh, it's one of those like uh, later uh, PBTA games uh, that that really stretches the limit of what games can be. So it's I'm really excited mm-hmm. to to learn about this one. Yeah, I love the like continual evolution of games that that they're becoming more and more niche yes um that like this, it's like this game does this very specific thing but it does it very well mm-hmm. and we're seeing more and more of games like that that aren't just like this is a generic adventure game thing um and it's like no this one is you're at a summer camp and it's like you're, you know, you're growing up, you're queer, you're, you know, like all those kinds of things. And it's like, it does all of those things really, really well. If you want that one thing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I will say like, even if you're not sure, try it. Mm Because like, yeah, like you can, you can tone stuff down as much as you need, but yeah. But but only if you're like, if you're not here for the emotional aspect, probably not the game for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, We talked a little bit before recording. Are there any like terms or concepts that you think the people need to know i think a lot of our listeners are pretty familiar with like playbooks and, and yeah moves and things the only like that. the only thing that might be a little specific is that um it's the sleepaway camp game and then it's the belonging outside belonging so we have pcs and we have npcs and people understand the difference between that and then but even within this there is the setting so we have npcs and we have the campers setting which behave differently and then separate from both of those are the individual campers you can make up who are slightly different from the npcs because you can throw the npcs as fodder towards the lindworm if you need to <laughs> you can oh no <laughs> which it might come up um yeah. but yeah. you if you do that with the campers and the game's over and the lindworm wins because the campers 
are to be protected. Like they're yeah. the whole reason we're there. So, so that's, that's okay. the only thing is that NPC camper and camper settings are all three different distinct terms. Mm-hmm. Okay. Don't let campers get eaten. I no. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. Not on your That's choice. just like a rule for life, everyone. If yeah. you are a camp counselor, <laughs> uh-huh. do not let your campers get eaten by giant worms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, are, well, I, are we ready? I think I'm so. Ready. I'm ready. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's make some people. Let's make some people. All right. All right. Uh, so what do we have to do first? I I have the the book pulled up, so I know, yeah. I, I know what's coming up. But. Right. So I'm going to go through an order. I'm sorry. You can hear. I, I have the hard cover. I'm sure you can hear it creaking a little bit. Um, oh, I love page sounds. They, yeah. Page sounds are great. It is, it is a very good page sound. And I've been very careful with this book. But do recommend getting the book because there's one special element here I didn't have. And I had the uh, PDF version. Um, so where we actually start isn't with our campers, but we start creating the summer camp. Right. So um, and this is this is the best list ever everything about this so it always starts off with there's five things that are always present the field at the center of camp the lake the fire pit the oldest tree in the woods and the bunks so i think you have i don't have it open but you have the google's thing oh yeah so we created a google slideshow um and we we had good uh good use of this in the past with Mm -hmm. uh with tracy burnett for a couple games that we covered with them um that uh let us draw the map of the areas that we were in so they've got like little symbols on there little shapes that you can put in yeah um so they've got like really basic emoji type shapes that you can throw on there um oh, that's good so we can and you can color them and it's uh it's pretty nice um yeah because yeah in my online game we use miro m-i-r-o like a board for that and that's mm. really cool because you can pull in like images and everything too oh and yeah i think my favorite part is they have like little fake stickies you put on it so and you can color mm. code so that's also really good and i think you can get like a free account of that but that's for online play if we were in real life play if we're all sitting at a table together yeah. we would put out a big piece of paper and we would all start drawing our map so oh, yeah so yeah so the field at the center of camp is there where's the lake Okay, so um, let me put a field. I know. I'm also kind of like drawing it on my iPad here. While yeah. we're... Uh, oh, I see. I see the field. Care. It's a big square box. Yep. yep. Okay. Trying to and make it yellow. like wheat Fields color. Fields yellow. Yeah. I'm trying to select the right color. I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh... <laughs> but this is like part of the fun too. It's like, okay, uh-huh. where is this going to go? And then it, because yep. it, it's important. So it did say you, the field was at the center of the camp. Center of camp. So like what, yeah. what sort of field is it though? Is it, is it, because well, I pictured like a field of wheat, but is it a field like that? Or is it like a, like a. Well, uh, I mean, yeah. So like the question, is it just like a big, like open field of daisies? Is it a corn field? Is oh, it? Oh, it's not a corn field. I'm going to say that right now. Uh-uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Why was... would you build a summer camp around a corn field? Because <laughs> uh, it's tall stalks of corn that you can go running through that that could be scary. You know well, what? Exa- that could that could be. But you know what? That could be an option later. Because like, to me, it's always like a parade field where it's like just a big open field. Do we, oh, interesting. Wow. Do These we are... choose like what our camp is after drawing these things? Or well, like do we what, like what, what kind of camp it is? Yeah. yeah. It's just summer camp. Right. But like what type of summer camp? Just like summer summer camp? Or like is this like a a, a LARPing summer camp? Is this oh. a summer math camp or Oh, I just is this yeah, a summer camp for circus performers? Is this Girl oh, Scout camp? Is this... You know what? I I have never personally thought. I'm like, oh, it's just like a summer camp, like like wet hot American summer summer camp sort of thing. <laughs> like you just go and it's camp. Yeah, like yeah. but it could be like I mean, those are all things we could have where it's like a because it's I guess it could be math camp. I mean, I feel like it should be something like vaguely outdoorsy. Yeah. yeah. Like no. a math camp isn't really. No. Yeah. No, I feel. You yeah. know, like it's clearly not computer program or summer camp. That's, that's I mean, why I was thinking like LARP camp. It uh, could be a LARP camp. Where they do a lot of LARPing outdoors. Yeah. Uh, which would be ripe for some like horror shenanigans. Right. That's all, I never thought of that because it's like because you're going to have the little kids there, too. So it was to me, yeah. it was always just camp generic summer mm-hmm. camp babysitters club summer camp sort of thing oh, yeah I, oh yeah but like, like moose, moose head is that what they go to Mo- oh, something with a moose. 
<laughs> but but at a LARP camp, they could they could learn. Uh, yeah. First of all, how to role play. Mm-hmm. Second of all, uh, all the skills, the physical skills, right for role no, the- playing for LARPing. Oh, right? also there's costumes. Also right? making I- making and wearing <laughs> costumes. That's very good. Let's make this a LARP camp then. And you know what else goes along with that? I, because I want the lack of technology to matter, I always set mine in like the late 80s, early 90s, which might be because that's when I was going to camp. Yeah. Um, But I want, like, I liked, like, I I played one game where we had a, not a Xerox machine, but the, um, what's the blue one where you turn it? It was like a, and the sheets would come out cold, not hot. Oh, Oh, yeah. I can't remember what it's called. Is it like for carbon copies? Yeah, like that, but it was blue ink and not black. Mm. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like a big roll, and the teachers would do that. It was like, cause like, oh, man, like zines have to be a thing, like camp zines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you want that, like the real hardcore homemade, like stapled together sort of thing, feel to it. Yeah. No, it's, you know. yeah, I like the idea that this is like a, like almost like a Renaissance fair kind of like full immersion. Wow. <sighs> like fantasy LARP. Wow. I that's do like wild. that. I that's, do like that's that. That's wild. I love it. Oh man. Is this that's field so a courtyard now? I think so, yeah. So our field yeah. at the center camp is that's the yeah. Amazing. The, yeah. The Queen's Field. Yeah. Okay. That's that's so good. Um Okay, so is it actually a square as I'm drawing this? Is it actually a square? Do we want it to be like a big circle? Or are you on a different one, Amelia? I Oh, I still have the square too. No, I'm also drawing on my iPad, like an like with an uh, actual pencil. Oh, okay. Oh, you're drawing. You're drawing your own little map on your yeah. your your fancy so iPad. Look, yeah. So it's not okay. Know, so it's not just squares and circles. just squares and circles <laughs> and cloud. <laughs> yeah. Stamps. Yeah. Sure. But yeah, you don't have to be a good artist to play this game. I'll say that. <laughs> so where do we? So okay. So yeah, I'm thinking like. Uh, just a courtyard, like in the middle of uh, whatever structures we have here. If it's like super hardcore camp, maybe it's like a, uh, maybe maybe it's like a like a castle. Uh, well, it's specifically a field. It's a field. Yeah, that right. comes into yeah. play later. I think okay. it's where you know, like it's it's a field, like where we would eventually, maybe at the end of camp, set up our maypole. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, or something like that. Like you know, like everybody practices their dancing or like yeah. fake jousting. Mm-hmm. Okay, so where is the lake then? I think it's south of the field. Ah, <gasps> yeah. And then, like at the end of camp, like there's a procession where you, you know, everybody marches to the lake to say, you know, for like the end. Yeah, like that. Is it? Yeah. Is it a big lake? Well, we will answer questions about the lake later because that's, that's one of the settings. Okay. And we decide, so we make just need to know about. the location of these things, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can change cool. it later, too. All right. Uh, where's the fire pit? Is it north of the field? Is it in the field? I want it separate from the field. Yeah. I feel like it should be kind of like maybe on like the northeast corner okay. of the field. Yeah. All right. So I put a little sun icon there. Oh, I see. That's northwest, though. Oh, yeah, you're right. I, You know what, Ryan? When she said northeast, <laughs> I looked that direction, too. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I know that. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, it's good. Okay. So we got a little uh, circle uh, with some seating areas around it, and that is the fire pit. Yep. And then we have to do the oldest tree in the woods. Oh, yeah. So where are the woods? Well, I guess the woods. Well, the the woods can be anywhere, and this is just specifically where the oldest tree is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think it's. I would say it's like in the. We, well, if this fire pit's in the northeast corner. Let's put it in like the like the extreme northwest corner then, like away from the lake. Like way up here. Yeah, I think like way up there. Okay, so we've got um, we've got a large rectangular. For those that aren't able to, we'll, we'll probably put a link to something in the show mm-hmm. notes uh, for this. For those that can't see it, uh, it is in the uh, a large rectangle uh, where the uh, center is a green square with the uh, lake at the very bottom of the rectangle uh, that is just a cloud filled in blue. And then we've got a nice uh, hourglass in the upper left-hand corner. The oldest tree in the woods. Oldest tree. There it is. And is it 
is it a wise tree? Is it a scary tree? Like there's, is it where like people carve initials? Like there's a lot, like just that, like oldest tree in the woods, like opens so many questions. Uh huh. Like, oh, what? Does it have big branches kids climb up on? Oh, is it, yeah, is it like a, like a, like a low tree with lots of branches or is it like a tall tree? I like one of those, uh, like fat trees with lots of branches. Yeah. Like, I think at least one, like, minstrel or bard or something has to be able to sit on one of the branches of the tree and play. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. And, like, there's always, like, a camp <laughs> picture of everybody up in the branches. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so, where are the bunks? Uh, I feel like they're on the same side as the fire pit. So I don't know if they're at the top or on, like on the north or on just the east. But I feel like they're close to the field. And what are the bunks names? Like, are they named after? Are they named? Oh, are they named after members of like the fairy co- like court? Mm. Or is that asking for trouble? <laughs> <laughs> ooh, Interesting. Right. Like that, like doing that, like, ooh, now we can pull in the face stuff here. Because there's there's a settings aspect that's the strange, oh, the strange, yes. No, they are named after the fae because because one of the potential f- members of the strange is the, uh, the oh gosh, I'm blanking the name on the, qu- the forgotten lady, I think. No. Okay. It's very good. Yeah, there's the, right. let me see, let me, let me flipping, flipping. You can hear all my pages. Our Lady Oubliette. And uh, the slumbering beast. Uh oh. The king, the king under the Underhill King. Okay. Uh, yes. No, we are named after like Fay Court members. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. So we've got our our Fay bunks. Yeah. Um, I I put them to the west of the field, I see. away from the fire pit. Okay. Because I that figured they reasonable. don't they don't want to put the structures near the <laughs> fire pit. I was thinking like, oh, that's just a quicker walk to the fire pit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's because good. then you can look out your windows and, and see, see the fire pit across yeah. the field. Um, and that probably can be used for some horror shenanigans. Yeah. Okay. So now we have the five base things. And now each player chooses one. The nurse's cabin, the creek with mud castles, the performing stage, the field everyone dreams about. The best stargazing field, the sneaking path, the hidden picnic bench, the petroglyph boulders, the swamp full of mosquitoes, the path covered in cairns, the mushroom log, the secret kissing grove, and the abandoned stoned wall. Wow. Oh, there's so many good ones here. Right? And I will say, like, as you play the game and as you play a campaign, like, maybe you bring one of these in as needed, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, the performance stage. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So you want to do the performance stage? Yeah. I mean, that seems like a thing we need. Yes. Yeah. Where Didn't do you say you... each player picks one? Each right? player each picks pick one. one. Yep. Yeah. So where do you want that, Amelia? Um. Let's say on like the like on on the opposite side of the bunks. So on that eastern side by the fire pit. So, yeah. Oh, that so makes that, sense. Like, if you're in the field or whatever, <gasps> you can see the stage. Do we? Do we want to move the fire pit so it's right in front of the stage? Mm. So that way, like, sometimes, like, there can be, like, performances, like, around a roaring fire and everything. So then, like, stage, like, here. Yeah. And then fire pit here. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, so it goes bunks, oh, yeah, field, there you go. fire pit, stage, all kind of in a line. Like yeah. that. I'll make it uh, skinny in this direction. Yeah. Um, there yeah. we go. All right. So we put us, we put, we moved the fire pit. Uh, a little bit down, and now it's uh not in the corner anymore. Yeah. Um, it's a good stage color. Let's just go with teal. That's fine. Okay. So we've got the uh the stage in there, the performing stage. Yeah. Oh, it's always so hard to pick. I know. I'm like, I'm like secret kissing grove. Mm. I mean Please. that's <laughs> it's all Brad. I don't <laughs> not all... want that. Right. I know, right. Right. Yeah, this, is our, you know, this is our one chance. Yeah, you know, I'm going to lean into it. I'm going to say we got a secret kissing grove. And it's going to be um, a little south, like kind of directly in line between uh, like down south from the oldest tree in the woods, like right behind the bunks. Okay. And it's oh, like, yeah. like right that around here. Uh, yeah. 
smiley face. Okay. Smiley That's face. not a good shape for kissing. No, a make smiley it a smiley face. Make it's it a heart. heart. I Ryan. I'm trying to find a heart. <laughs> but yeah, oh, there is I, a heart right next to the smiley face. There you go. Okay, there we go. And it's, I, I imagine it's like a tiny little grove. Like, there's like a hole in the bushes you go through. And it's all like dogwood trees. So they're real pretty. Mm. Make it a nice red heart. Okay, I'm so drawing, we got our. I'm drawing some lips. There you go. <laughs> the important part. I don't think life. I have that option on my stamps. <sighs> All right, so now I need to pick something here. Uh -huh. Um, um, oh, okay. So I gotta, I gotta lean into my brand a little bit. Uh, not my magical girl brand. Uh, hmm. but my love of astronomy brand. <gasps> um, oh. and pick the best stargazing field. That's that's a favorite of mine too. That's so good. Um, it. because I think there is a hill, um, off to the east a bit. Okay. That uh that has a field at the peak of the hill <gasps> that oh. lets us uh gaze at the stars. Oh, and you have to hike up the hill a little bit too. Yeah. So you're always just slightly out of breath. Mm -hmm. Which is the best way to look at stars. Yeah. I'm going to put it kind of up in the uh, the northeast corner of our map a bit. Yeah. Uh, so it's not near camp because you want to get away from the lights of camp yes. and the lights of the, the fire yeah. and all that stuff. Um, but I'm going to put it up there. A nice dark green because you go in the middle of the night and it's a field. I don't think I have any star shapes on here, do I? There has to be a star shape. Like there's the no way there's not a star there's shape. There's a sun shape, but... Weird. That's a little too on brand. Um, oh, here we go. Little stars. Little star. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like it. And I'm glad you went with the stargazing field because that was the one I was also thinking. <laughs> <laughs> they're so good. But yeah, they're all so good. It's like this is why you want to play with like six people so you can have so much. I know. <laughs> uh, okay. And then as a group, we choose two. A camp cat. Courageous leaders, a culture of honesty, economic prosperity, minimal camper drama, long administrative memory, protected property, easy access to public transportation, and under or understanding parents. Mm. Right. I don't really want low drama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, minimal camp drama seems mm, that's not what I want. That's not like, why, why I'm here. am I here? Yeah. I can I can see. It as the campers themselves have low drama. Yeah, but I don't want that. <laughs> That's also part of the fun. I know. Okay, um, so we want high drama kids. Yeah. yeah. So we okay. can well, eliminate I mean, one. Honestly, I mean, we're at like a, a Renaissance it is LARP. A LARP <laughs> yeah, high, high drama. <laughs> okay, fair point. Fair point. We just made a fancy theater camp, Ryan. Uh, high <laughs> drama. Hundred percent true. I, okay. I, I kind of like culture of honesty. Mm. I like then, that too. You know, like, because then people are compelled to be like, li you know, you speak when you're hurt, like you can be hurt, but you're also like, hey, people are going to talk about it. Um, yeah. And I also I like, like understanding. Yeah. And understanding parents because, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. But those are the two I like. I mean. Yeah. I do like the culture of honesty because that kind of leans into like uh, proper use of safety tools and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. As well. Yeah. I also just love the idea of like, okay, we're going to sit down and we're going to use the talking stick and talk about our feelings. Right. It's very mm -hmm. good. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I'm here for it. So we've got a culture of honesty. So we don't, but we don't definitely draw that anymore, still drama. Right? No. But I'm going to take a note culture of honesty. I'm going to make a little text box. Yeah. And then, okay. and then the, the other ones are good too. Yeah. Okay. So. I would say that I don't tend to leave camp, so easy access to public transportation is not important yeah. for my games. It feels no. like it takes away some of the tension if you can easily get out. Right. Right. Well, and I know. Also, in, this uh, is like an immersive experience. Yes. So I feel like that doesn't really fit our. Yes. Yes. But our yeah. game. But I do like if you take those, like what sort of games you can, like they, they give a different feel to every game. Mm -hmm. yeah. I do like the thought of courageous leaders. I do too. Where like the the counselors are the people that like they'll they'll jump in the way, right? Oh, that's good because yeah, that's what we kind of are. 
Yeah. I mean, Kim I like, Cat is nice too, but. Yeah. Well, I always have like the rule, like, cause you know, like you go through, we didn't do this, like lines, veils and highlights and you say, well, like no harm to animals. So, you know, the camp cat will be okay. Yeah. I think, I think, in a, yeah, we had, a, we had a game with the camp cat and it, everybody called it a different name and it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we want for our last one then? Uh, um, we've got a few good ones on the table. Yeah. Kia, yeah, can you read them again? Sorry. So camp cat, courageous leaders, culture of honesty, which we took economic prosperity, which I kind of like the idea that we're not in this a fight. Um, minimal camper drama, which we said no to. Uh, mm-hmm. Long administrative memory. Protected property. Easy access to public transportation, which we also said no to. And understanding parents. Okay. So I, I want to also make a case for economic prosperity. Oh, interesting. Because, like, instead of, like, you know, bootstrapping all of the costumes and stuff, like... <gasps> I, I'm yeah. imagining like oh. hardcore LARP camp. Like amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm thinking of it not necessarily as like this is a camp full of rich kids, but like you can come here and everything we have it's everything. a well funded oh. LARP camp. Oh, that's camp. Right. amazing. Oh, I love yeah. that. Let's do that. Yeah. Uh cause cause that opens it up for like elaborate costumes being used against you and right like we can have jousts with actual horses yeah. right oh, oh man <laughs> like we had like there's the insurance for that uh-huh. yes <laughs> yeah right like that yeah like the costumes are period authentic so amazing yeah. i think this was some someone's like endowment or something yeah yeah, yeah. I I would like that period appropriate. We still have modern showers and toilets, please. <laughs> yes, <Yep>. please. <laughs> that's yes. that's important. That's, that's got to be part of it. Yeah, yeah. And at least one office is air conditioned, please. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Yeah. It's only only the camp counselor bunk is <laughs> is air conditioned. Well, <laughs> well, that's we'll do the camp counselors bunk together. They bunk with the kids. <sighs> Let's see. In my head, they always bunk with the kids because like the kids can't be alone at night. Oh, that's a good call. But how are they going to sneak off to the kissing grove if? Oh well, then the kids go to bed, and you have two counselors in a bunk. Hmm. Because you have because like the counselors have nights off too. Like the kids can like stay up till ten, and like from eight to ten, it's like free whatever time. time. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. There yeah. has to be air conditioning somewhere. That's really yes. my only. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine. I imagine that the there's at least a little bit of AC in the mm-hmm. kids' bunks as well. So you yeah. want them to sleep comfortably, right? Yeah. Yeah. And even though we didn't put it, like, the nurse's office definitely is air conditioned. Yeah. yeah. Kids are running around in, like, chamo or whatever. Whew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Okay. So now each player details one. Where the fire pit used to be. Where the frogs used to sink. Where the fairy houses used to be built. Where the path used to go. Where you used to sneak away to watch the sunrise. Where you realized you weren't straight, where the oldest cabins are, where the witch was spotted, where kids kissed when you were young, where you confessed your childhood crush, where the great battles of youth took place. Oh, man. Right. These are so good. Like, I think where the fairy houses used to be needs to be where the bunks are. <gasps> oh, are these the oh. new bunks then? Yeah. I mean, uh, especially if they're named after, like, members of the Fae Court. Like, oh, that, like, I feel like at this point it's forgotten that, like, that's why they're named Ooh. those things. But, like, that's where it comes from. Oh, that's good. All right. Why, why, did, they, why did they build the bunks here then? Um, hmm. Is it, like, because we built, like, the fairy houses here, like, there's some protection here? Like, they were evoked enough here that yeah. there's, like, a little bit of their power. Like, it's like a fairy, like a safe fairy rank. Yeah. It's the whole camp. I like inside, that. It's the whole camp inside a fairy ring, and we don't know it. Ooh. Oh, that would be cool. Okay, I made a little uh, almost fairy icon, and I crossed it out with a no symbol. Oh. Yeah, you have to make the fairy one bigger though, because the no symbol covers it up. Yeah, it's true. That's good. <laughs> oh, I have to think. These, the rest are so good. Oh, I'm gonna go where the witch was spotted. I want to say the witch was spotted. Uh, oh, oh, gosh. Is it best star, stargazing field or secret kissing grove? Oh, secret kissing grove. She was spotted by the secret kissing grove. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because how are we going to represent that? Um, 
Um, we can here. I can. I can. I got, got it. This. Okay. Okay. And... So what am I going to choose then? Right. Um. Okay. I did it. Oh, amazing! I see oh, it's a very good. I love it. That's very good. I made um, a little witch's hat. For, for this audio <laughs> medium so everyone can see. Uh-huh. There's a little witch's hat right next to a heart. They're like, the oh map. no, I'm visually represented on our map. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, uh, where would be a... I've got like three or four different questions that I want to go through, but what right. one do I want? Pick something, right? <laughs> All right. It's a All one right. shot. We can do this. That's true. Okay, okay, okay. Um, where the path used to go, Ooh. I'm going to say on, uh, uh, off of the lake, there was a path that kind of led, uh, into this area. Uh, and that path has worn away, uh, because that area is now someplace that nobody really goes to anymore oh. for ominous reasons. Okay, so this is a path from the the lake is in like the bottom center of the map, and then this path kind of heads vaguely northeast. Yeah, vaguely um, northeast. Yep. Uh, but like right now, seems to go to nowhere uh, uh, because it is in disrepair. <gasps> well, that's that's really good because you know what we can figure out why it's in despair through play, or alternately, since what happened last time. Ooh. Half the camp danced into the lake and woke up freezing. Flayed oh, wow. animals roamed the woods. Yee. One of your friends died. Yikes. The cops showed up and shut everything down. Oh, no. Each one of you got a scar in the same place on your faces. Or no one remembers. It's been too long. What? Uh, that one. Yeah. They're, that they're, they're, feels right. amazing. Right? Like this really like, oh, this is all nice and lovely. And oof. <laughs> they're, they're so good. I, I like the top, like the first one about like dancing into the lake and waking up freezing, or no one remembers because it's been too long. Uh huh. Yeah, I like no one remembers. Yeah, I like that's I something like that you, one too. Yeah, you you play, you figure it out through play. Oh, it's so good. You can like talk about letters and stuff. You find letters and like what I don't even know what we were talking about. Uh mm-hmm. huh. Oh, it's so good. Amazing. So, yeah. Okay. And now that we've started camp. Now we get to make our players. Ooh, we made a camp. We did. We've made a camp, and we're going to add to it, like even add to it through play. Do we need to name it? Um, we could. It's camp. What's a a good LARP camp name? Oh man, like the court, like the summer court. What about like Camp Fantasia or something? There's that, or like it's. Are we the summer court? I like summer court. Summer court sounds good. Yeah, because it's like the fae, you know, like the winter court, the summer court, like the fae. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And now we would make our characters from the list. Do you need me to read through the names of the character, the playbooks, or are you? Yeah, want let's to- uh, yeah, let's go through listeners. the playbooks and okay. uh, give us a little rundown of what each of the playbooks kind of kind of means. Okay. Um. Maybe I'll read that. Like, there's a wonderful paragraph about them, and I will Uh-oh. read those. How convenient. Yeah, this is like a well-written book. The athlete. (laughs) Always choose win, yells the athlete, both on the field and in life. The athlete is cold skill, emotion transformed into a furthering of the desire to do even better in the world. Never assume the athlete doesn't care, even if they never show it. Feelings come secondary to victory over the lindworm, to keeping everyone else safe, to giving everyone else the space to process. Feelings are later. Win is now. The athlete is a storming individual. Their power is in restrained fury, tragic heroism, and their physical ability. Okay. The athlete, the counselor, and this is like a like a like a therapy counselor, not like a because we're all counselors, right? Most people who work here are just here for the friendships, but not the counselor. They're just here to help the kids, nothing more and nothing less, and they'll die before they let a single kid get hurt. The world is harsh and cruel, and the linworm has traumatized too many. The counselor will do anything to keep their kids safe. The counselor is a passionate individual. Their power is in their heartfelt speeches, charming air, and the people they surround themselves with. The crafter. There is magic in the world. Magic with a capital M. The magic of the secret places that want to grow and thrive. All things are connected by this magic. Even the worm, 
as horrific as it is, must be connected to this order somehow. The crafter is responsible for teaching arts and crafts to campers, but more importantly, responsible for cultivating their sense of magic and connection to the arcane. Crafters listen to the call of the universe and respond with their own creative expression. The crafter is a quirky individual. Their power is in the subtle magic of the world, information from the greater world, and skill at creating new art. The fresh blood. The fresh blood isn't really fresh. They've gone to this camp for longer than some of the administrators have worked here. They're fresh, however, in that the sense that they only stopped being a counselor in training, or CIT, this year. For the first time, they have to navigate their world anew. It is now full of strangeness, and they are surrounded by idols from their youth who have turned out not to be gods, but instead just regular people with regular lives and regular desires. The Linworm has always been a campfire story, but watching their once mentors and newfound friends prepare for it feels impossible. The young, the fresh blood is a naive individual. Their powers in their youthful energy, genuine love untouched by age, and a heartfelt peer relationship with many of the campers. Mm. The lifeguard. Some people might become lifeguards to avoid having to do the hard work at camp. The lifeguard is not one of those people. It takes a special kind of strength to be willing to drop everything and jump into the waves to save a kid you've never met before. The lifeguard is here to protect their friends from the camp, weathering whatever the universe could throw at them with the same dogged smile. The, young, the lifeguard is an unbreaking individual. Their power is in mutual aid, physical defense, and self-sacrifice. The ropes keeper. The ropes keeper tends to the ropes course, the structure at the heart of the woods. They are an enigmatic staff member, one who prefers the company of the wooden beams and tall trees to the presence of other staff, or, heaven forbid, actual campers. Still, the <laughs> ropes keeper is a vital part of the camp ecosystem and helps hold the entire community together with their stoic hermeticism. The ropes keeper is a distinct individual. Their powers in quick movement, sudden shows of cold kindness, and the forest itself. Mm. And then finally, the song leader. Camp music lifts us up and binds us together. In uproarious sing-alongs, we find community. In heartfelt reframes by Campfire Light, we find home. The song leader sings from the soul with carefully chosen words and a gentle touch, and their voice hits you square in the heart and makes you want to join in. If the camp has a voice, it isn't any of one person. It's the combined voices of each and every camper and staff member, but it's the song leader who spurs them all to sing. The song leader is a tender individual. Their power is in their voice, the voices of others, and the togetherness of countless arms wrapped around countless shoulders. Oh, so good. Yeah. I'm going to let you two go first, because um, otherwise I will just pick the same one I always like. <laughs> but There you go. So what, what are you thinking, Amelia, for your camp leader? I don't know. So, like, there was one as we were talking about them that I was like, Ryan's going to pick that. Is it the song um, leader? It wasn't. It was early. Like, the craft? but then after you said song leader, I was like, no, he's probably going <laughs> to. Yeah, uh, like, I, like I'm like, one. Ryan's going to be the song leader. Because Ryan does often pick m musicians. and right? Well, and it's it's a very good Ryan character. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um. I mean, I feel like the lifeguard also has the potential to be a Ryan character. Oh, that's you know, interesting. Sort of the mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. life saver kind yeah, of. Yeah, but they're kind of closed off a little bit too. Yeah, which is what makes me think no. Yeah. Um, I feel like Ryan also could be the fresh blood. Oh yeah. Uh, I feel like I'm I'm thinking like. See, I was thinking the crafter for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my go-to. I'm like, I need yeah. other uh -huh. people to pick so I don't be the crafter okay. again. But the uh, crafter's yeah, the best. I mean, yeah. The the crafter would be would be probably my top pick. The crafter or the counselor. Yeah. But so probably the crafter. Your thought process for my pick is exactly what was going through my head. Um and I was thinking the song leader ultimately. We know each other so I know. well. I know. <laughs> and we're at a we're at a point where we probably have like what would you say like an eighty percent success rate maybe. I think so. Yeah, of like guessing what the other person will do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although I was I was slightly tempted by the athlete, uh, mainly because of Stranger Things, um, mm. and oh. like the mm -hmm. the the jock type character that like you know is whatever it takes to win right right yeah do you want to break outside your mold right i don't want to do that this okay time. no no i would like okay. to be the son the son leader because that yeah. sounds amazing it's so good it's so you're good not having you. a dirge strangle thorn moment no, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna name my athlete type. 
Athlete needs a strong name. Dirge sounds pretty strong to me. It's true. It's true. <laughs> it is. We, oh, yeah. And the athlete's choices are, name choices are a sturdy name. Yep. A name that can be used like a battering ram. Dirge is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Amelia, let's make your character then. Oh, what, okay. do, what are you going to? What are you going to choose, uh, Nicole? I'm. You know what? Since the crafter is taken, which is what made me, I'm going to be. I'm thinking of the lifeguard. All right. Yeah, because they're very good. So the crafter. Ooh, do you do you want do you want to read it, Amelia? Or do you want me to? The play um, to find out and all that. Yeah. So play to find out. Does the magic care about you? How do you stay connected to the real? What do you have to cope with, and how do you cope? Ooh, those are all intense questions. Right? Uh, okay, so choose your name, a unique name, a tongue twister name, a word that is normally not a name, a name chosen to confuse. <laughs> hmm. I feel like I want to go with a word that is not normally a name. Ooh. Um, I'm trying to think of, like... I'm going to make a little bit of noise from it because I have this amazing yeah. baby name book for when I like when my mom is pregnant with me I to pick my baby. Two of them sitting on my desk right now, right next to my <laughs> jar of dice that I keep specifically for this show. <laughs> this, this one's so well, this one's from like 1979. It's 3,000 uncommon names for baby. And the names in this are amazing. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Yeah, like Lolita. And like, oh my God, the name, it's amazing. It's amazing. Like, there's lots of ones that are like Secunda and stuff. Like, just oh, neat. Yeah, <sighs> I have um the the baby name Bible, which is fifty thousand plus baby names, right? Um, and then I also have the baby name Wizard, oh. um, which they put out a new edition every couple of years because it has like stats on how common the names are. <sighs> um, but I like that in the back it has sections about like different like types of like they're sort of sorted into themes and stuff oh um, classical charms and graces uh fanciful and fantastical so that oh, that's kind of fun that oh, is good. literally falling apart pages are coming out of it right <laughs> um but i am going with a name that's not a name oh um and i would like to be named soliloquy Ooh. Mm. is that now here's the question because this is camp is that your real name or is that like your camp name who knows oh i'm not telling i don't even know how that's spelled my goodness i just realized i probably have never written that word before (laughs) (laughs) all right uh nicole what about uh for the lifeguard what is uh your play to find out and what, what name are you gonna go with so the lifeguard play to find out what aren't you willing to sacrifice are you actually selfless or does your selfishness look different? Will you leave the camp behind? And my names are a short name, a name that's easy to yell, a sharp name, and an honest name. I think I'm going to go with a name that's easy to yell. Mm. And I have to think about that because I have to practice yelling names in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I believe my dad told me when I named a dog that if you wanted it, you needed a name that was good to like yell or shout or whatever, that you wanted it to be like about two syllables and you wanted it to start with like a hard consonant. That makes sense. (laughs) That makes sense. (laughs) I think I'm going to go with like a masculine name. Ooh, Baron. Baron. Yeah. Amazing. B-A-R-O-N. B-A-R-R-O-N. Wonderful. Okay. All right. Um, and then for me, the song leader, um, my play to find out is, is this place still home for you? Does singing together hold any real power in the face of violence and cruelty? Will your softness last the coming storm or will it be worn away to reveal roughness and sharp edges? Oh, so good. And then my name possibilities. Um, a name with a pleasing sound, a name used only here, a name that's fun to chant, a full name never to be abbreviated. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> They're also good. I know. Um, Gosh, I do like the full name never to be abbreviated. That's very good. Um, 
because <laughs> it just it just it's like you have to say the whole thing otherwise yeah. it doesn't make sense i feel like if that's the case then you need like a like hyphenated oh. like you know like mm-hmm. a mary Catherine. Or yeah like i was a, i was thinking like um, mary, mary kate mary uh something yeah. or other for some reason um, mary, a lot of mary dash names yeah, yeah, my like name. my sister's Mary Elizabeth, but oh. we don't say. It. But, but if she, my mom wanted to name her Mary Catherine, it was very insistent that if she named her Mary Catherine, it would be Mary Catherine, not Mary mm-hmm. Catherine. Right. Really, Mary Catherine. Um, I know Nate just read a book where one of the characters' uh, names was Noah James. I've gone to camp, and my husband went to camp, and we both know a Chris Smith, and they were never Chris or anything; they were always Chris Smith. That's how I knew my ex-husband always. And then, like, finally, after we were dating for, like, two years, he's like, you don't have to say my full name. (laughs) And I was like, oh. (laughs) Uh, So a full name never to be abbreviated. Mm. This one's a tough one. Jedediah Jeremiah. (laughs) (laughs) Do you know Jedediah Jeremiah Jameson, Jersey, York, oh, and Samuel. York. <laughs> York. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Uh, that came from our, our random table name generator. Uh, oh, my God. Of uh, Catacon 2019. Amazing. Uh, session. Yeah. Do you so, have a die? Do you want to roll a die? And I can I can find a page in my, um, in my or, book. Or, yeah, Jeremiah is a good name. Or, yeah, it could be an uncommon name. Do you have a letter? Is it mas- do you want a masculine or a feminine? The, got kind of the start of one brewing. Okay. Right now. I need a good last name that can go along with a hyphenated mm. first name. Yeah. Mm. I haven't even thought about a last name. I know, we but don't... I've got to do full names, so. Yeah. And you know what? We don't have to have a last name. You're soliloquy. Nobody knows your True. last name. Right. Oh, wait. Hold on. There's a section in here called nickname proof. No. Oh. Oh, but I think it's a name that you don't nickname. Like Elizabeth, like if you're Elizabeth, you're always Elizabeth. You're never like Elizabeth. Right. So yeah, these are supposed to be ones that you can't yeah. shorten. But like it's okay. impossible to give them a nickname. Okay. I think I think I got it. Uh I just okay. need a last name. Um uh I'll just go real generic with Smith. Uh, because why not? Yeah. For sure. Um <laughs> so so this this name has a story behind it. Okay. Uh, my character's name is Margaret James Smith. And the story is the parents both picked names for uh, their child before they they knew uh, the gender of the child. And then uh, they just decided to slap it together. I like right. it. That's very good. And, and so, so Margaret James. Mar- Margaret James. Yep. Oh, Margaret James. Oh, man. You're so close to being a Maggie, too. I know. I'm Ma- oh. Maggie James Smith. Oh, no, Margaret James. I love the way like Maggie James sounds. Yeah. I know. But Margaret James. Margaret James. Margaret James. Call to action. Yeah, like that. Um, so this is not at all the direction I kind of expected this game to go. And I think <laughs> that like we're probably just starting to touch on it in this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, it it goes places, yeah. Um, that are not. I don't want to say not what this game was meant for, but like, <laughs> um, I think we stuck to the spirit of we it. We forged our own path. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a um, little bit. I, and I'm I'm just really excited for people to hear where this goes um, because yeah. I, I love where everything ended up. Mm-hmm. Um, this game has a lot going for it. I, this was so much fun. This was, was so much. So I can't fun. wait for people to hear the rest of it. I'm I bummed know. that it can't all come out in one week. Uh-huh. Um, but Ryan has to sleep sometimes, and also I guess he has a wife and kids. I know. So. I have to edit sometime, and uh, you know uh, that time is not this second. So <laughs> it'll happen. Fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, but yeah, this series was fantastic. I love this game so much. I love the character creation, world building in this game. Uh, you know we love uh, we're, we, we're character creation cast, but we love world building. Uh, we do because it starts with a C. Uh, collaborative world building. Uh-huh. <laughs> I wasn't with you for a second there, but I got it. I got it. Uh huh. Um, but you know what? Uh, before we let you go for the week, we do have some calls to action for this week. Uh, some of them are extraordinarily important. So uh, please stick around. 
First up, and most importantly for those of you that are able to vote in the United States, please head to the polls tomorrow, Tuesday, November 8th. Um, If you're listening after that date, obviously you can disregard this message. Um, Please check what time your state has polling hours. Um, We just learned that apparently it is different in every state. I could have sworn it was the one thing that was consistent, but apparently not. Um, I know there is a full list on Ballotopedia that you can find. Mm -hmm. Um, Otherwise, um, you can call your local county clerk's office and see what the polling times are in your state. Mm -hmm. Please remember that no matter where you are, (laughs) this this should be true. Um, Once you are in line to vote, even if the polling station closes, you can stay in line. As long as you are in line at closing time, uh, you are allowed to vote. So remember to get in line by that time. Please also know some states allow you to register on the day of, some don't. Mm -hmm. So you can check ahead of time. You can go to vote.org to check your registration status. Um, And you can also, again, call your county clerk to find out uh, what the registration guidelines are in your area, too. Um, Even if you've voted before, we strongly encourage you to check because some states do purge their uh, their registration rolls. Um, So you may have have dropped off at some point. Um, Make sure your address is correct, all that kind of stuff. So we also suggest bringing a piece of mail and an ID with you to the polling place again. All of this varies state by state, city by city, because America is dumb. <laughs> um, but there's there's really so much at stake at this election um, and honestly, probably every election going forward. Uh, so please head out there and vote. Um, we strongly encourage it and we will be voting. Once you are done with that, definitely check out this next thing. Uh, if you have a chance to on the one shot secret archive Uh, Take a look at the new Star Wall Odyssey of the Lucky Finn campaign. Uh, It's using the redacted uh, system of RPGs. Um, I I do know a system they're eventually going to be going to. They were using uh, Slammer Jammer uh, from from Slammer Jammer Mm -hmm. Slammer Jammer (laughs) from you know what. but well, because of, we haven't said those words on our show before. I know. Uh, so they were using that and then all the stuff came out and they don't want to use that anymore. So they uh, kept their world building and uh, ported it over to the, uh, a different system. And uh, I don't know if James has revealed it yet, but uh, check it out because I, I'm editing the episodes where they're talking about it and using the new thing. And uh, it doesn't even matter what system they're using. They're amazing. These uh, are amazing people. I have played a game yeah. that was me and these four people. Yeah. And it was one of the most awesome games of my life. Yeah. Big moment. It was great. It was like, run I'm by Rich so Howard. Jealous. <gasps> so jealous. So jealous. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Um, so I know that it's gonna be amazing. Yeah, you got James and Mel D'Amato, Drew Mergieski, Ellie Grower, um, and the occasional Project Falcon even uh Ooh. makes a uh, an appearance here and there. <laughs> I I love the story that they're putting together, and I cannot recommend it enough. I also did podcast things. Um, I was a guest on another podcast a while ago, um, and the episode is finally out in the world, um, or should be by the time this episode releases. Um, You can head over to the Epic Levels Mad Dungeon podcast to check out the episode where we created a system neutral playable adventure. Um, It is based on Mad Lib style prompts, the roll a dice uh, or roll a die, uh, decide whether you have a verb or a noun or whatever. (laughs) Um, We throw a bunch of words together and then you try and make an adventure out of it. Um, So we ended up with like a space diner and like alien mind control goop and using the word malort so many times that it started to sound like a fake word. it was so much fun. It was <laughs> it was a ton of fun. Um, and the, the folks over at Epic Levels are just like lovely, lovely people. It was great mm-hmm. working with them. I, I hope that I get to again. Um, so we'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. Um, and hopefully you will check it out and have as much fun as I did. Absolutely. Uh, now on to the portion of the call to action where we tell you that our Patreon is cool and you can get some cool things there by joining our Patreon. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was heartfelt. <laughs> I know. Uh, we are giving you, at this point, weekly chit chats between Amelia and myself for everybody. Uh, bonus outtakes for everybody. Uh, exclusive episodes and ad free episodes to those at the side quest level or higher. Uh, also, side quest level or higher includes a personal thank you note uh, from us that created by uh, Amelia. Yay! Uh, they're really nice. They are phenomenal. Uh, I highly recommend that level or higher, uh, not because it gives us more money, but because that thank you note is really nice. Because Amelia makes really nice cards. It's very true. <laughs> uh, but you also get a nice shout out on the show at this very point, uh, which you are going to be starting right now. So, drum roll, please. Drum roll. Uh, our first ever patron uh, still contributing. Thank you so much to Lieutenant DJ G, Tigranosaurus. Thank you so much. Eric Bonds. Thanks. Thank you to Matt Newton. Shadim Kowal, we're so happy to have you here with us. Thank you. We appreciate your support, Daryl Holiday II. Thank you. Thank you to the shyest barbarian. Thank you to Benjamin Sweeney. Lorcan McGinnis, thank you so much. Many thanks to Rob Fletcher. Kevin Brown, thank you for your continued support. And thank you to Tentacle Duck, who still has the best name. <laughs> If you like what we're doing here on the show and aren't able to support us financially, totally cool. There is a way that you can help us out a lot without making you spend any money. And it really helps us feel really amazing every time we hear one of these. And also Amelia's birthday is coming up. So, you know, you should probably do it. You can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser or Podcast Addict. Every time you leave a star five star review, we will read it here on the show like we're going to do right now. Yeah. Uh, this review came to us from a very special listener, uh, Badgerfish7 from the United States of America on iTunes, titled Character. Five stars. Good show. From Nate. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to point out, good show has three exclamation points, and then from colon, Nate. Yep. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, Nate. Uh, supportive listener, Nate. Yes, whoever uh, you are. Who uh, could we, that possibly be? We hope that <laughs> you keep remaining awesome and, you know, uh, say hi to your mom. Are we? Here's a question. Here's a question. <laughs> are we allowed to read reviews from people who have been guests on the podcast? Why not? Okay. If you, if you Nate wrote a review. Because definitely been on a few episodes. If you wrote a review, I'd read it. Okay. I should write a few read. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so that was obviously my son, Nate. Thank you, Nate, for Thank the you, Nate. lovely review. You are I will make awesome. sure he listens to this episode so we can hear us talk about him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that is all we have for today's episode. Join us next time when we get to finish up our camp counselors and see what sort of horrors they might be up against. Mm -hmm. um, until then, take care, everyone. Drink some water. Loosen your shoulders. Enjoy some crisp fall air. Please go vote. Mm -hmm. um, but more importantly, keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permissions from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero, remixed by Steve Combs, and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. 
Further information for the game systems used in today's guest can also be found in the show notes. If you'd like to support our show, find us on Patreon. Get access to bonus episodes, extra outtakes, and much more at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time.